I think we might be live. Ladies and gentlemen, 4.01 p.m., Canoga Park, California, coming at you live from the Tulane Life headquarters. Uh, yeah, we're going live with Letitia Klein today. She's going to share some stories. We're going to share some stories about our awesome trip out to Cave City, Kentucky on motorcycles, history, riding, whiskey, cooking, steak dinner shots, all that good stuff. <laughs> and this episode is brought to you by Eagle Rider Motorcycle Rentals and Tours. What's happening, boys? And if well, they go to eaglerider.com, we talked to a German gentleman this morning. Uh -huh. uh, they can hit the link, and they get 5% off their... Well, so the link is on our it. website. Yeah, go to our Two website, Lane click Life. on Eagle Rider. And so, wait, I'm glad Josh we're on the same page joined, in different books. Uh, you get two credits. So you have to go to TulaneLife.com. And hit the Eagle Rider link. Right. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is uh -huh. a really... This is really a terrible start to the show. Well, Fat Tires. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey. New Belgium. Cheers. Yeah. Boom. That, uh, Thank you, it's New cold. Belgium. It's good. We, had we an only awesome had trip. three beers left, so we're going to drink them. Go ahead, Lance. We had an awesome trip in Page, Arizona. Can't wait to share that with everybody. I mean, we did some great sightseeing. We met some great people. I mean, it was actually really fantastic. The ride home was even better at 16 degrees. Phenomenal. It yeah. was cool. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, literally cool. So stay, cold. stay tuned to that. We also have a jam up trip coming here uh, with uh, Matt Laidlaw and his crew. And uh, we do. But we gotta, we, we've also dropped three Southern Comfort Tour videos and we're getting a we lot have. of nice feedback on those. Uh, and and luckily enough, we have Letitia Klein uh, that will be joining us because she toured us around Kentucky a little bit. It's her home turf. Uh, that, again, I mean, go back and watch the videos. The one yesterday was fantastic. The one before that was great. They're all great, and they're getting better. I'm loving them. People watching them are digging them. They're there. I mean, Letitia is like a awesome tour guide. Well, she's <laughs> awesome in many different ways, but we kept calling her Letitia. The whole thing we say Letitia. So she's going to have to bust our chops <laughs> on that one probably, but. But yeah, so I I mean these videos are great. We're getting a lot of people that are that are giving some excellent comments about the tail of the dragon, about the Chair Hollow Byway, Skyway, Highway, whatever way you call it. <laughs> uh, we also watch that one for the whole people, video. The Lynchburg yeah. piece people really like. They like this Maker's Mark tour. We've had people say they're only twenty five miles from where their their hometown. They're on the tour and they're like, we didn't even know. We need to go do this. We have people that still think we're there. Yeah, we do. <laughs> the guy that we just mailed stickers to said, oh, I'm coming to the Smokies in a couple of weeks. We should ride. I'm like, well, I will not. We will not be there. <laughs> hey, let's uh, not waste any more let's time. Let's not do it. Well, hold on one second. I, I don't know. Can you see that? Oh, can you see? Oh, knife garage shirt. And then look at that one, Josh. I don't know oh. if I put these on. They're on the website. I don't know if they're live yet. Yep, they are. Well, they turn are. around, Josh. I they are. Not knock over I mean, any cameras. Guys, get your holiday gifts now. Whoa, two lane life. Oh, Check that out. Oh, you got a cramp. Oh, cramp. That's the traveler I'm series. Think about it. <laughs> um, yeah, You're without a powwow shirt. Any yeah. further ado. That was given to us in page. Yes. By the trading post guys. Yes. So, so hey followers. Yeah, bring it on. I didn't plan an intro today. Should I wing it? Wing it. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, coming at you live from Cave City, Kentucky, in her vintage, awesome brick building that she built by hand, not the brick building itself. I digress. I don't have an intro today. A wonderful human being, Letitia Klein, in the house. Thank you. Thank you. I think that was perfect. That was absolutely perfect. Cheers, guys. <laughs> she did build a building with her own two hands. She did. Yes. Well, Actually, and, I, and I was doing dinner earlier, and I cut my hand so oh, I, I'm making dinner too i build the building and i i bring home the bacon and i cook it up well there you go so real quick letitia is awesome on a motorcycle she's awesome at construction she's awesome at making a cup of coffee for us as well <laughs> well and storing my camera gear when i guess I she's awesome too drunk yes mm -hmm. yes uh, well, thanks I try we to do appreciate everything. Yeah, we appreciate you joining. It's it's very appropriate since we have the drops going right now, and uh, we've had a lot of uh, good comments. Uh, we had many around you today. I don't I don't think you should go look at all of them because they're. I think they're following. Our viewers are falling in love with you, Letitia. <laughs> Did it again, Letitia. Letitia. What? 
Let's see. I love, so first of all, I love that you guys, I think you should, uh, I thought that you butchered my name the whole time. <laughs> I didn't say anything about it. <laughs> but you know what? Half the motorcycle industry does call me that and always has. I mean, it's just been that way forever. So I just never change it. I never correct it. And most of the time I never even notice it. I know that sounds bad. But. No, I, I understand what you're saying. We're yeah. just so used to it. But to hear your mother call your name, uh, then it's like, oh, it's not Letitia. <laughs> well, if my mom was calling my name, that's because I'm in trouble. So no. <laughs> I'm fine with the other. So we appreciate you taking us around. We're going to next week, we're talking a little bit more about the caves and the tour that you did. But maybe just, you know, talk to people a little bit about your your legacy and family history there in Mammoth and Cave yeah. City. So born and raised in Cave City, Kentucky, it's this tiny little town um, that is south, uh, south central, right in between Louisville and Nashville. Um, even though it's a tiny town, it's got the longest cave in the world, which kind of puts us on the map here. And so people from all over the world visit my little town every year to go to that cave. It's a national park, a biohemisphere, all of these things. Uh, national Geographic rated it as the top place to visit in 2021. Wow. In the country. Yeah. So, you know, we kind of got it going on with the caves and I was, you know, below ground, we got it covered and I've been working above ground here to try and make it happen there too on the streets. And so I moved back home five years ago and, you know, we have a free community motorcycle garage called Smiley's after my dad. I have the dive bar, which is with my mom and my sister. And then I bought this old theater building right beside that. And so it has four different, it's divided into four parts. I've been working on it for three years. And then we have the parking lot that we've turned into an event space. And then we bought a food truck. So it's, it's been. And you had, you had a family relative that was well known in the caves, right? Yeah. Floyd Collins. Uh, he was trapped for 17 days in 1925 and died. Um, it was the largest story between the world wars. Lindbergh flew the news. The guy that covered it for the paper, Skeets Miller, won a Pulitzer Prize and changed journalism forever because he was so little it became interactive journalism. He could actually get down there. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a pr pretty crazy story. His name was Floyd Collins, and that um, that really connected that cave system to Mammoth Cave to make it the longest cave in the world. So I always say we're like the Kennedys of the cave. Wow. No. I have my two, our, our two books right here. Yes. Uh, and you had me pick these when we were there for Floyd Collins. Yeah. This is uh, some good reading right here. Yeah. That one is from his brother, the, his brother Homer. And so it's the most accurate tale of what happened during that time. Well, we were, we were kind of looking at, some renderings and drawings today. It, it yeah. appears he was actually down in there a ways. Oh yeah. And yeah. he was saying you you'd said Josh said something today that resonated with me because you, you you said, had said he was it, trapped in like a, a, a natural, human, natural a natural straight jacket. Yeah, a straight jacket. It was like this. So we saw the pictures of it and he is he really is. He's flat mm -hmm. and he's well he was yeah. on an angle. No. Yeah. I mean yeah. yeah pretty much. I mean Just, yeah when you were when I was going over the interviews that we did in the church, mm -hmm. I was looking up and I was missing a little bit of footage. So, you know, finding old newspapers, like the stuff you sent all online mm -hmm. and there was a diagram. It sounds like he was 60 feet underground or at least into the cave. Yeah. And he was, I'm looking at these pictures, like no way in hell I would be crawling through there. No. It's this little crevasse and he's horizontal pretty much. Yeah. Just chomped down by a rock. Pretty wild. Can you imagine 17 days like that? And it was January and February. It was freaking freezing. And there's like water, you know, because it like ice and then that melted because they had a warm day and it's like water comes down. But get this Homer, his brother, the one that wrote that book, brought him some moonshine whiskey down there because, I mean, hell, wouldn't you want some too? I mean, I'd be drunk as I could be just passing mm -hmm. out. Um, right. But it's during Prohibition and the National Guard was there controlling the crowds. So they actually banned his brother from the site because he gave wow. him whiskey. Wow. But, Crazy. So, he couldn't, so he was even more miserable. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, and you know, I guess they had tried to get down in there and that shaft, uh, I guess, collapsed. And so it was just like I, I we were reading something that there was 
many people in there. So it was kind of changing the <laughs> ecosystem in the cave and some of the rocks were actually starting to fall. Yeah. Um, just because were... the natural ambient temperature is like 57 degrees, but it was changing. Because of this, it was sand cave, right? Yeah, sand cave. Yeah. So the other caves, because of the rock surrounding, none of this stuff really changed throughout the year. There you go. See, so you made us learn yep. more. You guys are an expert. I'm I did learning a ton of research you. today trying to put together <laughs> that interview, and now I'm like, damn, wish I knew that at the time. I don't know. Can the cameras? See That's that? cool. It's on I mean, manual focus. And when you guys come back, you have to go to Sand Cave. We can't go down in it, but uh -huh. uh, and it's a it's a shorter walk. I promise you. <laughs> It's a lot shorter. <laughs> well, I think yeah, it's interesting. Do. My grandfather was born in Kentucky. And then when I got home and was telling my mom and dad about this wonderful journey, my mom said, when I was a kid, every year we'd go to Cave City or to the caves, the Mammoth Caves, and go down in there. That was like their little yeah. vacation. Wow. That's so cool. Well, I was just in uh, New York, upstate New York, and there was a uh, – we were on the back – Mike is picking for the show and and we go in to meet the woman and she's like she's where are you from I said cave city mammoth cave and she said oh I know it and I said you do and she says me and my husband traveled all over the U.S. and went to every cave and so then I go in our house and she has the mecca of memorabilia for mammoth cave wow and yeah I bought I got all of it so awesome. I, mean, I, was wow. like, I have to have this because I mean, anything and everything to do with my hometown, I usually buy and collect. And one day I'd like to have um, a museum here uh, so I can display all this stuff for people so that they can kind of remember what this town was founded on. That, that's a really good idea. That Now that's something that can keep you busy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's, spend, let's spend five minutes or so on you. When you were there, we were standing in front of the bug and, we had the mayor sign up, and we don't think the Californians hurt your chances, but maybe <laughs> we did. What what took place over the last couple of weeks? Uh, well, unfortunately, I lost. I lost by fifty votes, um, which I think is great. Uh, I am still. I you know I kind of had. They asked for a comment. The paper did afterwards, and. You know, I ran a really good fair race. I know that I didn't have to buy, bribe, buy, or bully my way to a vote. I earned every one of those. And um, I feel good about that. And I know that, you know, either me or someone inspired by me will come and pumble it, pumble it to the ground. We'll come back and win it in four years. And so I'm celebrating that victory, you know. Good for you. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, be, you know, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't like, a little depressed about it. There's two things. I get a life if I'm not mayor because it's four years. And because we're so far behind, it'd be four hard years of nonstop work. Right. And so a part of me is relieved that I can go on and do other things. But I love my hometown. I'm very much invested in my hometown. And I just right now, the timing is just so great with what's coming in around us. And I just know that I could have really helped this city. Um, and so that's a hard thing to swallow, you know, and that, so, but um, I can still change it just in other ways. So you could have your museum and then you can have like a once a day where you take people like, I really liked it when you took us to the church and, and the cemetery yeah. and you had family members there and you had this deep history. You mm -hmm. were able to share that with us. I mean, someone would pay to do that, to go get that bit of history. Yeah. Well, I'm talking to someone at A and E right now about that. So we're thinking of turning that into a mini doc U series. Um, well, you got a little problem. You but, signed the disclosures to be on our video, so you can't do any other projects. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can work that out legally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, cut you guys in on the deal. I'll give you a percentage. How's that? Well, Especially now that since you're experts on it. Right? Just have us be on your first show. That's all. Perfect. Sounds like a deal. But that, that sounds cool. I mean, you know, yeah, that's it's rough. No one ever wants to lose, but you have to think about how far you've taken it, too. I mean, you've been on city council for a couple of years, You've or a couple terms. I mean, you've you've really inspired revitalization in the area that we saw downtown there. Yeah. Um, and so 
you know, be proud of what you accomplished so far. You don't need advice from us, but we're proud of you because we see what you've done there. And, and we, we saw it firsthand. Well, thank you. Uh, and so, you know, open that museum and open a bourbon shop and let's get rolling. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. I, should, I know. That's what. Uh, and you've done all this despite your sister. I know. She's just, that girl keeps holding me back. I tell you. No, my sister, I wouldn't be able to do, let me tell you, my bar, my, my bar, our bar is, runs perfectly because we all have our roles and we do them so well. Me, my sister, and my mom. And, you know, I can't believe that we haven't killed each other because it's like family in business together, but it's family in business that involves alcohol. So it's like fucking crazy it's a crazy idea i would never suggest it for anyone else but it works for us and <laughs> and um you know we've been doing we've been pretty good at it you know but um, well, we saw that and and i was just kidding but the your mom and your sister i was so excited to meet them and and man it didn't disappoint she was exactly like i i thought she was going to be loving but she's also fun you know yeah outgoing gregarious person which is which well, is you really talk. cool you talk about everyone has their role, yeah. but your sister is a security guard. She's a body, <laughs> body, your bodyguard. She'll yeah. pour some shots. She'll kick some people out. Well, we were sitting you know. at the bar hanging out and this guy was talking she to just, us and he was chewing our ear and she came up and grabbed his arm and said, Hey, whatever your name is, you're, you're done. out of here. And she walked yeah. him out. We're like, going, Whoa, <laughs> you know, and that later that night, I think she, uh, she kicks someone else out and then they try to fight her and she just knocks them out. It's like it was later after you guys left. Cause I heard, I don't hear about those. People don't want to tell me cause I get mad about it. Cause I'm like, I'm the PR, right? So I have to do right. damage and I'm running for right. mayor. So like the night before to like the night before I'm running like the election, I see on Snapchat a picture of my sister in someone's field, hugging a donkey. And so I'm like, um, uh, um, anyway, so I was like, oh my God, uh, Shannon, please don't ride the donkey. I've got like 12 hours left before <laughs> right. she's like, I'm home now. I'm like, thank God you freaking idiot. Stay home. And she says, I got, I took the donkey home with me. I'm like, <laughs> what? I'm like, oh my God. I was so nervous that she was going to do something so major yeah. before this election. We need to take Shannon to Oatman so she can really see some donkey. Mm -hmm. She could meet the mayor there. Right. The mayor the is mayor a donkey. A donkey. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. That's true. No, that's true. True. They, true. they voted the donkey in. Walter yes. the donkey is Walter. the mayor. Yes. Well, we all know what a donkey's called. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so no. you you grew up there. Um, I love the smell of your your father's garage. Yeah, uh, it brought back some memories for me. But just all the back roads and stuff you guys have there. I mean, that state's definitely a state to go check out and ride your motorcycle in, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I love that. You know what I love about it is that not a lot of people think of that. So it's still pretty. It's not congested. The roads are pretty good because of that. You know, with the secret gets out, now that it's out, you guys are letting it out there. We're going to just be flooded like the tail of the, tail of the dragon. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the, the, the asphalt's perfect. I've never seen such nice asphalt. And I'm like blown away because I know you get some cold weather there. Yeah. And it's like, how does it so pristine? Well, it's funny. I... Even, the, even the ride out to Maker's Mark, that was, what, 65 miles to Loretta? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was incredible. And I didn't even, I look back on the footage. I didn't even film that much. We were just enjoying it, but it was a great ride there and back coming out of uh, cave city. It was, there was curves and cambers and dips. And like you said, the road was just completely perfect. Yeah. We got obviously super lucky the whole week with weather yeah. and then you pull in there and ride back. It's a good time. I know. I think the roads are so good because we just have mostly Amish that ride on, drive on them. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just, you know, we only saw a couple yeah yeah that was interesting you know the, uh i mean it's probably the times a day that we were out you know in the evening you'll see them because they're going home you know right. or on sunday you'll see a lot of them so well we we did the whole trip it was like 15 1600 miles oh, wow. but the seat time 
was double. It was like you were on a 3000 mile trip because we, I just plugged into the nav, the scenic routes. Mm -hmm. So we rarely got onto a highway. We, it was just all back roads and it was yeah. just, it was some of the best riding we've done. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, good. I love it. I mean, I, that's one of the reasons why, I mean, I grew up riding here, you know, with my dad and you take a back road everywhere. Even when I started driving uh, and going to school, my school was like 30 minutes away, high school. Um, I would always, you know, you always take back roads to everything. Like ev there's a million ways to get to one place here. You know, there's so many roads. It's like, do you want it to take five minutes or do you want to take it, take 45 minutes, you know? And most of the time you just take the long way because it's so pretty, you know? Did you ever and ride a motorcycle to high school? I actually, I don't think I ever rode one to high school. I would have loved, I don't know why I didn't. I, I mean, I thought that would have been pretty badass. So you pull up, you know, on a bike, everyone would be like, oh man. Well, you know what I did do? I didn't have a car for a while because I didn't want one. And I lived in Florida. So I drove my son to, rode my son to school every day and picked him up on a motorcycle. And he went to a Christian private school. <laughs> nice. I was for sure the only person on a motorcycle and definitely the only female. And, you know, and one day, like one of his teachers came and like kind of grabbed him when he just got on the bike because he was in trouble. And I let them have it because, yeah. you know, you don't grab someone when they're on a motorcycle. But, you know, it's kind of judged, I think, a little bit of being a mom and riding a motorcycle and having my son on it. And but I don't care. I was like that kid. I was like, Caleb, you don't even know how cool you are right now. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, and he rides now. Oh, yeah. He, he I got him his first bike when he was four years old. I mean, and he's been riding ever since, you know, now it scares the shit out of me. I'm like, <laughs> why did I do this? And, you know, when he was four years old, I, he would wake me up in the morning. He'd have his little boxer shorts on, his Alpine star boots on, and he'd have his motocross helmet. And he'd be like, Mama, I want to ride. And I'm like, oh, my God, I created a monster. I'm sure right. you know all about that, Lance. <laughs> yeah. Once they get in the blood, it's it's over. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's also a, a great cook. He had some scrambled eggs and some killer bacon mm. for us yep. the first day. Boom. Yep, I put them to work at our food Della truck. May. Yep, <laughs> named after my grandma. We name we kind of honor all the people in our family. So my dad's garage is named Smiley's after his nickname, and that's to him too. And then uh, Stella May was my grandma and passed away a year ago, and she owned four diners. And so wow. We started the food truck after her. Yeah. Interesting. Were the diners all right around where you live or were they? They were in a few different cities right around here. One. Yeah. So uh, the last, but she didn't have a diner for a while. She had dementia. So yeah. I knew, actually that's one of the reasons why I stuck home is I came home to have knee surgery and then my grandmother needed help. My mom needed help with my grandma. So I stuck around and yeah. I got bored and I just started building stuff. <laughs> and boy, you build stuff. Well, it's that fate thing. I mean, you were not going to be there and you decided to stay. Yeah. You know, yeah. you'd kind of left town and, and then all of a sudden this bug got you and you're like, I need to help my town. And so you ended up, yeah. you know, fixing up some places and creating a, a, a business or two businesses and three business that you, you've got the, your sister has the, shop next door to the bar i mean yeah. you guys have that it's the boutique and it's cool to see we walked across the street and had pizza at a place that you you know help the guys figure out that building and stuff so yeah it's neat to see that in smaller towns where people start to band together and and there's no questions asked we just saw that in page it was like they just embraced us and and we had a guy that we called surfs up our boat tour canceled on the lake didn't even know us. I picked him. I randomly hit him on the phone uh, or picked his business out off of Google, hit him on the phone. And he's like, come on over. I have a pontoon boat that you can use. Doesn't even know us. Well, that's the cool thing about like Cave City mm -hmm. or Page, Arizona. There are these small towns yeah. with these great people in them. And when you go there and hang out and we fortunately we've done that in two different in Cave and, and Page in the last few months. And it's like, I think I've learned so much more than some of our blasting travels, you know? And I was yeah. telling someone, you know, when I get back in town from a trip, 
you know, we s- split our separate ways on the freeway. I'll get home. It's early enough. I get my favorite Jersey Mike sandwich and I go home, whatever, chill. And we got so used to being in Cave City and in these other small towns. Let me get rid of this uh, in front of my face. But, you know, in Cave, we pull up to the dive in the morning, waiting at Stella Mays for breakfast. A stranger walks by. If you make eye contact, you're talking for five minutes, and it's great. <laughs> a good time. And I got so used to making conversation with everyone I met that when I got back here, I'm not from a huge place, but a little bigger than cave. I'm walking out of Jersey Mike's with my sandwich all stoked. I'm back home, going to go relax. And then uh, I go to spark up a conversation with someone walking their dog. And she just looked at me like I was on drugs. Well, It's just not the same place. You know, it's very really different. To LA. Welcome to LA. But yeah, well, in fact, even, in Cave City, we had a viewer recognize us that, yeah. like, how did that happen? Just yeah, pretty a couple crazy people. stuff. Yeah, well, I don't know if you heard the guy that rode 150 miles from Illinois and found our bikes at the hotel. Indiana. We brought him in the bar. Yeah. 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 There was, I mean, there was a few people. There was that guy. There was another guy that when you were eating breakfast, I think. And then when we were at yep. the cemetery, you know? Yeah. Uh, which well, is awesome. Brought- I love that. We brought you a customer in the bar, but the guy didn't drink because he was a creature. <laughs> <laughs> but he did eat at Stella Mays. Oh, okay, cool. So he did spend a little cool. money. And we did have a question. Mm-hmm. Where'd it go? I thought it was I asking if, if Shannon rode. So asking if her sister really? rides. Well, my sister tell does. Him, tell him what she rides. <laughs> We're so opposite. She rides like a stretched out Hayabusa. Like no way. Yeah, like the big the big one that you would I don't I don't ride those things, so the one that you would take on a drag strip. I'm going to show these people what wow. she's talking about. It's hilarious. I see that. You have a picture of it? Well, she's got to wrestle something like uh, that. Let's see. Yeah. She is a nut. Well, oh, and now she, then she just bought this like someone some crackhead probably came up and was like, "Who are you going to buy my scooter?" And so she just did <laughs> right then. She's been riding it around. No way. Like a Fifty cc, and you'll be out by the park, and you'll see Shannon just ride by on it. <laughs> like she takes this thing ever. <laughs> well, apparently she has a jackass now too that she can ride. Right. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This isn't now the exact bike, me. but that's a stretched. Come oh, on. Come on. Hit it. It's uh, there you go. That's a stretch tie booster right there. Yeah, <laughs> insane, insane. Hers is white, and but she's rode lots of things, but she likes that bike, you know. That's funny. Yeah. So we got to get you out in the middle of the country or or west and go on a ride with us somewhere. Yes, I'd love to. Um, I'd love to. I mean, I love out west. So and haven't been out there in a while. But. We we can bring you to Page. You can meet the mayor there. You guys can talk politics. Oh God! <laughs> I'm going to take a break from politics for a few there days. There you go. <laughs> for like so a month. What, what part of upstate were you in? Uh, well, I went to New York City. Uh, so after I lost mayor, I was like, you know what? Um, it was a great opportunity to go take a trip, just like enjoy my life. And I used to live in New York City, so went back there, and then we went to Binghamton. Um, we used to, I used to flat track or not flat track, but motocross race up there in, um, Unadilla. I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys ever been there. Oh but, yeah. Uh, I haven't been, but I've heard of it for sure. Yeah. There's the Unadilla boobs inspector. So every motocross track has its mascot and Unadilla is that, but, uh, anyhow, um, but I, yeah, so I went upstate there and then I, uh, just kind of explored these small little towns. There was another town. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, Oneida or something. And it's mostly all women owned businesses and they're very celebrated. So it was really cool to come from a place where I've struggled so much as a female to be respected and earn a place at the table politically to go to a place where women are, you know, kind of really have a big say in that town. And you can tell it, I mean, it was a beautiful town. I mean, it's thriving and, uh, all the historic buildings were restored and lots of shops open. And so it's cool to see that. It's very um, uh, touching and inspiring. It was the trip I needed to That's take. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, do you watch Yellowstone? 
Oh uh, yeah, I do. But the I didn't see this last dropped week. yesterday. It, it dropped uh, a couple days ago. Yeah, two hours of it. Yeah. I wasn't as thrilled with the opening, but it, it's still good. But can I borrow your Paramount Plus? Yeah, I haven't watched it. There's a lady by yeah, the name man. of Beth that's kind of a badass. Yeah. Is that Shannon? Or is that her? <laughs> it's probably Letitia. Letitia. <laughs> Come on, buddy. So uh, when that first came out, my mom texted me and my sister and said that that was Beth was me. But there's moments of it that I definitely think that it's my sister. Right. Like, a lot of moments that I feel like it's my sister. So if my if me and Shannon morphed into one person, we'd be. Uh -huh. Yeah, she just doesn't take any shit. No, Shannon doesn't take any shit. I'm the calculated side of Beth. I'll fuck you up legally. So when we're legally, you, what's your sign? A Libra. Okay, got I'm it. Sales. That's all. Well, you what does that mean? That's okay. But I can make a decision. So, like, I'm not a typical Libra, right? Like, I'm not, like, all, like, I don't know what I want and all these things. I know what I, know what I want. So, no, you so know what you want. your birthday, because you don't have to tell us your age, but people can find that out there. But when you're closer to a Scorpio then. Uh, yeah, October 1st. Is oh, so, so you're on the other side. I don't know shit yeah, about this stuff. Neither do I. What's, I don't know. I don't know what's before, but you you don't have the full Libra in you. Well, I guess it's if you believe in numerology, then I'm yeah. ruled by the number one. So that's what someone told me. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Josh is going to do some fun fact finding. Fun yeah. fact finding? What are you talking about? <laughs> Astrology signs. What's before the Libra? Oh, I could. I don't know. I mean, it, I, I don't know if I believe in all that, but it's there's definitely character traits that that come with your sign for sure. Yeah. No, I can see that. I'm the scales, so I see both sides. I'm always the mediator. Right. You know, but I mean, I may, maybe when I was younger, I was a little more Libra, but life's made me, I, I guess, a Scorpio is what you'd say. I don't, I don't know. Life's made me a bad motherfucker. Is that a sign? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well you've done a lot in your life well i try to you know my i think that's one of the side effects of you know going through um a death you know death early on you know i lost my dad you know when i shouldn't have and death really teaches us how to live i saw these things that he never got to do that we talked about doing one of those was a cross-country trip on our motorcycles together and so I did that trip with, you know, afterwards and I, I took his journal with me and journaled the, along the way and finished it for him. And I mean, it just taught me that, you know, I don't know how, how long I got on this planet. So every day I'm going to live it like it's the last and I'm going to do as much as I can. That's true. I mean, we're all on the same conveyor belt. We just don't know when we're going to get dumped off, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now I know. <clears throat> But I think, you know, and, and that's the and that's the silver lining in it all. I mean, I think that's a great thing. I think it's a great way to live like that, you know. Um, you can also go to, and like my mom said, well, you can go to an early grave that way, too, because I definitely worry the crap out of her with everything I've done. <laughs> like yeah. skydiving, swimming with sharks and flat track and all that stuff, you know. Right, right. So we that's got Greg Rangitawa saying best guest so far. One bad motherfucker. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Well, thank you, Greg. <laughs> well, this is the second time you you've been yeah, on the show. With she, they can look back and see her, uh, and and Mike pops in, and so you have to go back and look at that one, Greg. Yeah, it's also on Spotify, right? Was that uh, one on that other one might be? I'm going back, kind of backtracking, throwing those up on Spotify. So they're coming one by one. Yeah. Hey, that look, this is my building. Great. This is, you know, the one we're setting in, the one I redid. This is it in the 50s. Oh, no way. Wow. Love yeah. it. So if you guys look above the ace where those windows right. are, that's where her flat is. You look out on Main Street, the the uh, Shannon store is underneath, right? Yeah, this is my to sister left, store. To the left is the bar. Our left is the bar. To our right is the food truck little courtyard you're building out there yeah right here so, so i so yeah, basically you if you're in this town and you're in cave city and you, you got to stop at the dive bar 
you got to go to Stella Mays right, right in the same parking lot and have yourself some food. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it's fun. We were in that bar every night for what? Three, four nights? <laughs> it's yeah. the only yeah. freaking thing to do here. <laughs> and a few seconds. It was dinners. great. <laughs> and you guys so, had, what was your favorite drink? Steak, steak dinner. Dinners. Yeah. So not in the episode that dropped yesterday, but I think in next week's episode, we get the breakdown on the steak dinner shot. We get some karaoke. We get mm -hmm. some, uh, lots of caving. Little dance. Yeah. Some riding, a ferry ride. Yeah. Uh, some history from you, some great stuff. Um, I did ask the people of the internet, the fine people of the internet, if they have any questions for you. Mm -hmm. So from Fish Face, hey, Letitia, have you done much track riding or is that more of your sis on her busa? My wife at 50 has done her first sport bike day with me. Any tips for her? A couple, couple parts to that, I guess. Yeah. Well, um, I've not done a lot of, lot of track riding. I did do a course with Jason Pridmore at Chuckwalla in California, and it was amazing. So I don't ride sports bikes. It's totally different for me with RPMs, and it's just not something I, I guess, enjoy as much as the other. But I really wanted to focus on hitting the apex of a turn because that I can apply to every other, like, facet of motorcycling that I do. Because we all turn um, unless you're riding – Unless you're doing drag strips, which I love also. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, so that and then I've done some after that. I went to um, I think taking courses is the best thing because it's so technical and it just teaches you so much and it allows you to be comfortable. Plus, you're on someone else's motorcycle, so it doesn't fucking matter if you wreck it. I mean, <laughs> that's part of the course. <laughs> I mean, and you're in gear and, you know, it's just a safer thing that's one thing i love about track riding is that it is you take out all those other elements like oil slicks and potholes and cars you know, side traffic yeah but um i did the bmw motor rad in uh south carolina and that's an adventure course which was awesome but afterwards they let us go on the track with their like R90s and stuff. And that was really fun. And because I'd done the Chuck Walla class before, I was able to ride a lot better at that. And so I would say if you get an opportunity to take a course, I'd do it. This is my cat. Sorry. It's just, I wanted to make an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so that's the, I think that that is the, uh, I guess the best way to do it. Well, and now recently, the last couple of years, like look at BRL and, and Moto America and these, now they've got these baggers out there doing that and, and other sporties out there doing it, soft tails, you know, ripping around the track. Um, I heard the first time they ran those, the, the metric guys came to the wall because the sound of those engines and they just wanted to see what was going on, that big rumble. So it's kind of interesting to see all this starting to merge together, you know? Yeah. You know what? I love that. And I think that there's a lot of people that are really good at <clears throat> bringing that to the forefront. You know, Roland Sands is good at uh, kind of making mainstream motorcycling and merging like old school racing together to just make motorcycling even cooler, you know, and, and a lot more fun. I mean, that was we deal with like hooligan flat track and, you know, Harley and Indian and everyone getting involved in it. And it's like, Oh, you mean I can take this motorcycle, this twenty thirty thousand $30,000 motorcycle that I ride on the road and I can race it on a track. And, you know, it's kind of like a badge of honor to be a hooligan. Where right. I used to, I mean, that's what my dad called me when I was little, I was acting up. <laughs> I was a hooligan. Well, we, we saw you, uh, we weren't going really super fast, but we were going probably faster than we should on some of the county roads. Yeah. And we saw you leaning into those turns and getting off the seat a little bit. You know what? I mean, but I will say, so I hadn't, I used to ride con all the time, 30, 40,000 miles a year on my bike. And, but since I've been doing this project the last couple of years, I, that numbers went down a lot. And, um, and then, you know, I had a wreck in Thailand and in the back of your head, some of these things stick with you. So I'd had knee surgery the ACL and everything. And so nine months later, I'm riding the only day without my brace and I low side because there's like diesel in a turn. <clears throat> anyway, my foot got stuck and it, you know, popped my knee again. And it wasn't like a major crash. It wasn't anything that really like 
hurt other than I had to have another knee surgery, but that stuck in my head. So sometimes in a turn, I notice that I'm not as good as I once was. So what I want to do next year is go back to some of these courses where I can just get familiar again on a track with someone else. Or, know? or what you could do is we ride at least one to two weeks a month. Yeah. I mean, you just come ride with us for, you know, right. 12 weeks out of the year. <laughs> I'm coming to California, I think in <laughs> January. So let's do it. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Cause I can't do it here in January. I'm not hardcore. Like you guys riding in 16 degree weather. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, someone's just wrote in there 30 minutes from Cave City. Uh huh. Right? Yeah, he was reaching out to us saying, Oh man, I wish you knew wish I knew you were there. We could have ridden. And we get a lot of that too. It's just it's hard to stay up to date. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For sure. Well, yeah. Well, definitely. go to the dive bar. Go to the dive bar. Go to the yeah. dive bar and say hello. Have With a steak dinner. Family we never... run, family owned. You'll love yeah. it. Ask for a steak dinner. So Letitia introduced us to the steak dinner. We never saw it. And I really never was a Jameson fan. I mean, it was okay, but I didn't go out. to it. Yeah. But after a shot of that with a little shot of Worcestershire <clears throat> and the lemon. Yeah. Boom. But we're still debating on whether the Jameson, we haven't tried it yet with vodka or anything else. I think it'd be fine with anything. I mean, you're drinking. I think, I think so sauce. too. Cause I think that, the sauce is what. So makes I'm going to go home and do a shot of water, and then the Worcestershire, and see if I go. Wow. Maybe well, try yeah, a gin go, or wow, rum or something go, weird. Wow. <laughs> no. Um, but I have to tell you again, we were talking off camera, but you know, Teresa and Laura normally get. Uh, what do they call their? Oh, the. It's, well, it's a, a martini, it's a martini, French but, martini, French martini, but they put you know a little bit of champagne in it, yeah. some Chambord. Yeah. After they have these, what I would call homemade, you know, whiskey sours, mm -hmm. you've turned them on to something, a whole different thing. Like you were getting the, the fresh eggs and doing the frothing and yeah. we haven't found that quite yet, but well, I mean, they, they're into the sours now. I saw some previews. Josh has some awesome footage of you with the little smoke and the glass oh, on yeah. it. Oh yeah. That some was slow-mo. I mean, Hey, not only does she build, ride motorcycles, uh, oh, run, she run makes for, a mean uh, drink. I saw it, but well, she you know, also could make some cool drinks. How did well, you when I moved you? to oh, New York, he, I didn't know anyone, and I was like, How do you meet people? I was like, At a bar, so I went to this. I didn't want to like hardcore bartend at like this nightclub. I was like 29, <laughs> I was like, I'm too old for that. shit. So I went to like a really nice Upper East Side place, and I was like can I work here? And they're like, do you, have you ever bartended? I'm like, no. And they're like, do you know how to bartend? I was like, I don't, but I've got Google and just give me your slow night and I'll make it your best one. And I worked really hard and I did awesome at that bar. Actually, when they closed, closed it for good, like years later after I'd moved away, they put me back up there and, uh, and I got to bartend one more time for all my old regulars. But I mean, I created, I became a mixologist and created cocktails like daily specials and stuff like that. And I so lived someone else. Huh. So before it was actually a thing. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And I would bring stuff from back home. So there's a cocktail that I made that's called the Papa because my Papa would drink uh, like, I don't know if you guys ever had this as a working man's lunch. It's a Coca-Cola and you put peanuts in it. Y'all huh. heard of that? Okay. Never heard of it. <laughs> and when you're busy working on the farm or any kind of manual labor, you don't got time to like sit and eat and your hands are dirty. So what you do is you take a bottle of Coke and you take a little drink and then you just pour peanuts in it and then you just drink and eat at the same time. <laughs> and so I created a cocktail as a Mexican cola and we did a, a peanut liqueur, a little bit of bourbon and then some peanuts in it. And like these rich people were loving it. And I said, no, wow. I, I feel like, like I'm a working man. <laughs> you just pay $15. Right. For some well, there are several <laughs> things you've done in your life. And you even were telling us about your modeling when you were like 13. So, and you just said it again, just now you've done, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do that, but let me do it. And I'm going to do it better than anyone else. <laughs> I just throw myself into it completely. I want to know everything about everything. And I think that's a blessing and a curse, you know? Yeah. 
you know too much you just don't want to know a lot you know right. so, i mean you're getting people commenting i was gonna say we got like eight here's people my sister saying, shannon come here oh, yeah, yeah. Shannon in here they're saying dr pepper and peanuts <laughs> here. Hey, that's so i'm having hey. a dinner party in a minute come here <laughs> where are the drinks shannon. hello what's hey. happening i know get over here what does she have a bunch of bottles in her arm yeah she does. she's got pre brought beer for <laughs> upstairs so, everybody, so got, you're having a dinner party. Yeah, well, I'm cooking upstairs. I finally have a kitchen, guys. You got so your appliances. Last time, I didn't have any of my cooking equipment with me. So, or in there. What's so on the like, menu? Um, risotto, sausage and spinach risotto. Mm. This uh, white bean and arugula salad, and this rosemary bread. There's a bunch wow. of stuff. Wow, we'll yeah. be there in a few minutes. Perfect. And right, I'll make a cocktail. You know, in Cave City, you have a, a, a red roof hotel that's actually got a green roof on it. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. But we've <laughs> never been guys on weren't first. too slow on us. Welcome there. Yeah. Yeah, we got kicked out of there. Weird. Well, the colorblind hunt. Or color yep. <laughs> you know, so a handful know. of people here recognize the working man's lunch. And we've yeah. got a couple variations. This guy says RC Cola. Someone else said Dr. Pepper and Peanuts. Uh, mm -hmm. Doug McKee, that's a staple. Peanut and Coke was a staple growing up. I mean, that's everyone's done it. I guess so I'm just not a working man. Does anyone know what RC is? Yeah, they still got it, right? Yeah, RC Cola. I mean, they make okay. it here. I, I just, some people don't know that. So the, the peanut deal, why not just do the peanuts and beer with the drink? That they still had to work. Well, you know, yeah. you get the... Uh, yeah, We're working right now. Some people work drunk. harder drinking. I don't know. No, yeah. we know how to ride when we have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't ride and have a beer. What are you talking about? Uh, now is not a good time to bring up the show's sponsor. Right. No, uh, now's a good time to bring up. I saw someone ask too where what part of New York City I lived when I first moved there. This was a bummer. I I um I went, I lived on the Lower East Side, Little West 12th between Greenwich and Washington, and they tore it down. It was this old uh, carriage house. It's the coolest fucking thing in the meatpacking district. And I went there the other day and it's gone. It's like oh. some big block building apartment. Passed, passed into history. I know. That thing was, to, you know, in the 1800s when I lived in it. I mean, it's tiny. Wow. It's like 500 square feet. You try to open the, oven and it hit the counter so you could only like slide things down <laughs> in it <laughs> but it was rent controlled and it was new york so it was perfect and then i lived on the upper uh, west side 79th in columbus but i worked all over i'm i'm kind of partial to 59th and lex god i love that too yeah, yeah. The, i'm, I'm uh, kind well, of the manhattan puke so pj did you go to pj clark's then uh I think we did. 53rd and 3rd. And it is the, this, it's a holdout building. It's like a it's tiny building next to 50 story high rises. And uh, it's been there for, since the 1800s. Um, it's just a really old historic bar. And what's cool about it is the guy that used to go there all the time when he died, he wanted his ashes there. So his ashes are there. Then his dog would come and sit there every day. And when the dog died, they stuffed it. So the, the, uh, dog and the guy is in the bar and it's just full of history wow. it's one of those places yeah it's a cool place if you go to new york city you got to go to pj clark's but that one there's three of them you gotta go to the one on wow third. you took us to talbot's in bordstown that was bardstown. Cool. yeah that was, cool. that was so epic i mean i i still sit here today and think about that is a building that has so much history and legacy to it yeah from when they were oil lamps, whatever they were using, whale fat or whatever, to where it's at today. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah, that, I mean, it's cool. It's an inn. You can still stay there. It's cool that it's a bar. And there was a fire which damaged part of it, but I'm glad that it didn't, didn't damage all of it. Like Lincoln stayed there when they're in a land dispute. His family was because the courthouse was right across the street because his home was right there, his boyhood home. And then, you know, all the cool people, like, Jesse James and right you know. and Bordeaux. So, yeah, and then that's the start of the Bourbon Trail, which mm -hmm. is cool too. And there's another museum that we didn't go to there. It's called Oscar Getz History of Whiskey. 
And it is everything to do with whiskey, like the history of whiskey in America. Hmm. So. Well, it's interesting how old, and we've talked about this, how old when you go back east or back there, you see all the different old buildings and everything. Go, There's old buildings and old things in history in Arizona and, yeah. and New Mexico and, and places like that. But Page, Arizona mm-hmm. was really what, 1958? Yeah. 55 is when it. Was they kind of started and it wasn't even a t- it wasn't even incorporated until 75. So very young little town. Yeah. Well, you get that out west. That's what I was talking about with New York. It's like um the uh people that might, you know, out in the east side and especially up there, um, they uh they you know lived there for a long time, and then a lot of this stuff didn't migrate over to the west. So, like far as picking goes. The East Coast is the best place to pick because if yeah. you think about it, making that tour, that trip across America, you couldn't take grandma's China cabinet, you know? Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, well, and it's funny too, because in the store, we look at the different places we ship to and East Coast, mm-hmm. New York, upstate, the zip code starts with a zero. Right. <laughs> right. And I then when you thought get, about that. Then when you get out here to the West, it's a nine. Right. So is that, that, is that how yeah, they get? Yeah, that? I mean it's pretty crazy. It's how it just moved west. It, it got a higher number as it went. Oh my god, I never, I never thought about that. I feel so blonde right now. I mean that only makes sense. <laughs> but geez, Lily, why well, did I, I never, never thought think? about that either until well, we were doing orders, and I'm like, oh my god, there's a correlation here. Like I didn't even think about that. But then when yeah. you're doing the orders and you look at the zip code, you could go, hey, this is two something, so it's farther east. You know, I mean, we don't have peanuts and, and RC Cola. We have beer and Slappy Snacks. Slappy it's Snacks? Yeah. What are those? That would be a saturated, uh, what's the meat? Oh, like a Jimmy, what do you call them? Beef jerky? A Jimmy stick? Whatever, a beef stick. Fuck is that? I don't know. <laughs> beef sticks. We got beef. We got deer jerky here. There you go. <laughs> we got all kinds of deer. Oh, I was, listen, I volunteered at the bingo hall the other night. And it's fun. And anyway, I come out and there's somebody with a 10 point buck in the back of their truck. Like they just killed it. They're like, hold on a minute. I got to go play bingo. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, what in the hell? I mean, did they got it at least? No. So oh, do not no. take deer jerky from somebody in a Ford Ranger. I'm just saying. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's not good. Yeah. You got to clean that thing. Right? I know. But, you know, bingo is too good. I mean, you can win a lot of money at it, apparently. I was, that's, I just volunteered there. I'd never, I hadn't played there. So, but I'm going to play. I'm going to gamble well, next week. We, uh, all these small towns have been really great to us. South Dakota was great in, in, uh, Deadwood and what was the what was their bingo, bingo that game? We went and- oh well in Deadwood, South Dakota, the community has come together to raise money for whether it be a child that has a medical issue or a family that's struggling, and they play sex toy bingo. So they got oh, giant dildos, they yeah. got suction cups, they got all kinds of things you could think <laughs> about, and it's all I mean it's all it's a joke, not really yeah. it's a real dildo, but um, you win sex toys and you gamble and you they raise, someone they, they raise money they raise it they said they raised whatever was it half a million over the past it's like 10 to twenty thousand a night yep. when they do it and they've done over half a million dollars of of raising a fund so like when we were there uh there was a father and mother had their son in for heart surgery and it was a struggle for them and i think they raised twelve thousand that night for wow. for the heart surgery so that's, sex I've toy played, bingo. Sex toy I've played bingo. a dirty bingo. We've done it at the bar. So you get it, we get you get sponsored by a local sex shop, and yeah, there's those. But the it's all about the person who, uh, like commentates the thing. You know how fun they are too. Right. And then when you hit like oh sixty nine, it's dollar jello shots. Ooh. Well, everybody yeah, has their, so you know this stuff. Yeah, yes. Yeah, everybody has their sayings like B four. Am I? Am I? Can can I? I I've cursed a lot. I can curse here. You can do whatever you want. Okay. So B four, and then everybody goes B four. You fuck. Wrap it up. <laughs> like that's you know like there's all these things that you say at Dirty Bingo or whatever. But well, in Payson, Arizona, we played chicken shit bingo. Yes. 
You ever hear of that? No, what's that? So it's a big four by eight piece of plywood with the numbers all painted on it, chicken wire around it. They put the bingos in. If you pick your number and the bingo shits on your number. No, if the yeah. chicken shits on your number, not the bingo. The, shits. Yeah, if the chicken shits on your number, bingo, you know. <laughs> and a, and it could be a, a four play. It could shit right in the middle of <laughs> right. And all four win. It's literally no lie. Chicken shit bingo. Go see it. Dakes Corner, just outside of Roosevelt Reservoir, yeah. just south of Payson. If Jake I tell Corner. my sister that, we'll be doing it at the bar next week. <laughs> <laughs> Except she might be the chicken. Who knows what Whoa. she might be. I'm just kidding. <laughs> she, um, that's that's crazy. That's that's funny. I've never heard of that, but it sounds interesting. So I guess you can play bingo with anything. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Like, uh, what's it called? Twisted? Twister. 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 Yeah, yeah. Where you're doing yeah. all the. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can do that as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. hey, you have a dinner party upstairs you need to get to. Um, yeah. And we're super appreciative of you hosting us uh, while we were there. That was that was just great to meet the family. And um, we do we do need to plan another ride at some point. We're super proud of you for the city council work, what you've done with your hands in that town. Thank you. And I know the mayor thing didn't work out how you wanted it to, but there's there's something coming. I, I can feel it. Fate happens. It does. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm regrouping and, and I'll figure out what to do with it. And I'm excited to see and showcase, and maybe this is just maybe the last thing, if you want to talk just a little bit about smileys because that's where we end the series and yeah. a couple drops and you know for you to reopen that and get things going and then people stop in and work there and and do their stuff on their bikes if they need to and we ran into that actually this week we had we called the uh, busted knuckles out of saint george mm -hmm. uh ryan shaw we we just outreached to some people because josh's bike was having some problems and I mean, people just showed up with you know, minutes, tools and stuff that we needed. And, and so we want to thank all those guys for doing that. But similarly, smileys. Yeah. Well, what, when I moved home, I wanted a place to kind of work on my bikes and my dad. So I went in my dad's garage. My grandmother owned it at the time, but it had never been touched since he had died. So this was 10 years uh, after his death. And so all of his tools and everything was still on the workbench and everything was in there. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to clean. It needed a roof repair. So I started working on the roof and then I was like, well, God, I'm going to fix these walls. And I, before long, I was just like fixing the whole thing. And I pulled open the garage doors. And when I did, all these people started stopping by and it was like friends of my dad's and they're like, Oh, I haven't been in here in 10 years. And they were telling me stories about them. And, and, you know, I just was like, you know what? let's just make this a community garage. And I had had a blessed life in motorcycling and had all these connections and all these sponsors. And, and um, I was like, well, let me figure out, I could do a free community motorcycle garage. Cause I'd started one before with my ex called standard and it was a paid motor community garage. And I was like, this community, my community can't afford paid. We don't have the money here. We don't have anyone that takes care of us. Sometimes these, luxury vehicles motorcycles are their only vehicles so um getting them back on the road was really important so i got a lot of stuff uh given i uh we worked hard the whole community helped build it i mean i couldn't have done it without everyone and um uh, it was a big reason why i chose to stay here because i wasn't i didn't have plans on staying here i had outgrown my hometown and there wasn't much to do but the people really made me want to stick around and, and so much came from that, you know, so it's, I found, got my dad's bike back again, the one he had when he died. And uh, we put that back in the garage and just, you know, it's been uh, an emotional, beautiful experience and I'm really proud to have it, you know, and it's have a great, that. It's a great place. Definitely Thanks. a great I mean, place. You can, you can definitely feel the love in that shop. Um, and certainly, he was open before and people are coming in. So did people that are in the community that know you and know the family to see the door open. I can't imagine. I just got chills thinking about it, driving by going, Hey, smiley's garage doors open. 
Yeah, and that basically wow. means we're open. Yeah. <laughs> but even if it's closed, I'll still knock on a damn door. <laughs> I'm like, give me a minute. I can't even work on my own bike. That's why mine. <laughs> right. Well, in the in the drop or two, I think the last drop you will see and hear the story with you in Smiley's, which will be really great. But it it makes me think about how we're in. We've known you before we were kind of hanging out with you mm -hmm. and, and through X games, Harley and different things like that. And we were on a trip and we were in Milwaukee and you and Mike were standing in front of the iron horse unloading some stuff. And we're like, Whoa, how's it going? Hugs. We did a picture. Mm -hmm. We said we should do something sometime together. And then we ended up in cave city and oh. Teresa and Laura, I got to say, they both really love you and they love the time there it was one of their favorite trips. So, they're not here right now in the studio, but they definitely would want to say hello to you. And you're stuck with us as family now. Well, yeah. I, I, you know what? I wouldn't want to be any other, anywhere else. I love it. I, awesome. I, I tell them hello, and I love that they loved it so much. And I loved having you guys here, and it was really special to be able to share this part of my life with another part of my life, you know, and motorcycling. And and I don't get to do that often. When my worlds collide, it, it feels pretty special and um, so I thank you guys for coming here to experience that. And I'm always like, God, I could have done so much more. We could have went and done so many more things, but I'm glad I didn't because now you're going to have to come back. To well, that's do right. Things. We yeah. do that fate. Yep. Just the yeah. whole way this thing's happened. You know? And the one thing but I haven't been able to get out of my mind was Einstein's typewriter. Oh, yeah. I, oh, shit. It's upstairs. So the night we spent a night yeah. for those watching that obviously they haven't seen the episode yet. Don't know what we filmed, but Spent a night just hanging on the side yard by the balcony, whatever you want to call it, having drinks, talking to a historian. She brought us in to show us just all this incredible stuff inside her house. And I say stuff lightly because it's just historic. But Einstein's typewriter, old publications of newspapers from the 40s and 50s and signs and paintings and just all this incredible stuff. So you guys will see that she's about her history and I uh, hope you all enjoy series the real deal we should yes. let her go because she's got yep. people dinner sorry i'm no. sorry oh, yeah. <laughs> no, this is that we do yes, about, I am about history though you'll see all of that and if you want to know anything history you just message me there you about go Einstein's typewriter right. the case. <laughs> thank you for the time thank you for the trip and then yeah let's connect and if you're out here in january let's figure out something okay and, uh, that'd be fun keep watching the episodes because you you just get more fun in them so yeah. I, can't, I can't wait to see the next one. So, hey, Boom. thank you. Hopefully my sister's slap is in there. Yeah. <laughs> Say hello to all your friends tonight. Have a good dinner. And we'll see you real uh, soon. I'll see you guys down the road. I don't know you if do. the slap is in there, but we'll see you down the <laughs> oh, road. Oh, that? Yeah, no, I don't think so. That's not going in there. All right. Have a good night. <laughs> thank you. All right. See, see you guys. guys. Bye -bye. I did not get the reference for a second. Um, yeah, we got some great comments. Um, see you down the road, Leticia. Thank you for being there. That's from Mad Mac. Uh, Timothy Johnson, rad guest. Going to be a great series of drops coming. Um, Albert says next East Coast trip submarine tour. Oh, I Yo, like it. That'd be sick. Yeah, I just I saw someone commented on my socks. Um, I would yes. just like to tell you that uh, this is not sponsored, but these are fire socks. Uh, I was going to say they're from that. Taco Bell. Oh, I was gonna say, are they Red Devil? Uh, when we were doing the Kingman, uh, the Route 66 documentary, uh, the people that ran or run the airport and a couple of other properties actually sent us because we told them that we eat at Taco Bell so much. <laughs> every once in a while, <laughs> so much. It's on our fast stops. every once in a while uh, on we video. Did, we drove like we did Taco Bell four times on the way and back to Page. To Don't lie to Bell. these great people. So. No, no shameless plug. It's just these. This is what it is. They're, right. They're hot salsa. They're hot. Hot salsa. Hot salsa. Hot hot salsa. salsa <laughs> sauce. Um, also, our whiskey collection is looking a little shy. So, oh, you want to buy me a coffee? Yeah, that that is Mr. true. Gosh, We're not going to ask for handouts. Uh, buy me a coffee. I just had the Woodford that, that Joe. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's. Oh, you're working on Joe's Woodford. Yeah. How's that? Oh, we got some life in that. I didn't see yeah. that behind the books. No, there's some life in that. The patties was good. Chris brought the that by. Great. But, you know, look. Hey, Mad Max said we're nursing the drinks. Buddy, I am empty. 
Oh, Don Julio. Empty. If I had another beer, I might be nursing it. We'll see. Oh, we got a little. We got some. So stuff. we have the the rest of the series. It's been great the whole time, but the rest of it's even getting better. The mic pops, man. And I Page was awesome. We had a great time in Page. Uh, I, we can't wait to share that with you. And we got that fun trip in between the first. Of we December. do. Yeah, we don't have to work for a few months. Yeah. <laughs> we got we got enough content. To, but now we can. Well, Josh. Has oh, to work. Yeah, now we that's can right. You with the merch. Edit. Galen's got the long sleeve garage shirt. We have a short sleeve. The back of it's dope. Go to our website, check it out. And all the hats are ready. Yeah. Speaking Josh of has... which, Anderson's outdoors. Yeah. Thanks for the two lane apparel. Received it yesterday here in Kentucky. Looks great. Thank awesome. you, Mr. Anderson. I love that because now we're in Kentucky. Lance is drinking the beers. Beer Lance many. So indeed. Josh has the, the traveler shirt on. The back of it's awesome. So check our stuff out. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. <clears throat> we're gonna do that more for Josh and we're gonna really celebrate Lance because he's getting older. Whoa. <laughs> Someone yep. commented on his mustache the other day. Man, he must have really aged. I think Galen's worn on him because his his mustache is gray. Well, just so everyone knows, don't say it. What? Don't say it. What? Are you gonna say it? He's gonna he's say well, it. Well, uh, when I was forty, uh -huh. I had a gray beard and mustache, uh -huh. so I dyed my mustache. Oh, he just let it loose. So I, I didn't. I had my beard. I just let that be white. But when I was just doing the mustache when we first started the channel. I would throw the color for men in it. So uh -huh. I haven't aged because if I shaved it off, I'd probably look 10 years younger. I might shave it off. Maybe I'll but shave it off aged. tonight. Every time I visit my mother <laughs> and I show her a two lane video, she go, I'm not going to even do an impression. I don't know how to do an impression. Anyway, she go, Lance would look so much younger if he just shaved his beard. I'm like, he knows, but he likes it. My mother, mother. has told me every time yep. I walk in. Before I die, will you at least shave your beard so I can see your face? Well, I'm 26 and going say, on I'm not 25 shave, going I'm not, on 50. Yeah, I say I'm not going to shave my beard. That way you'll live longer. Indeed. <laughs> um, well, I guess that's true. <laughs> let's see here. Now, Josh has a nice beard, Ooh. but I will tell you, your sister commented on my beard. Josh's sister? I don't have a sister. sister. I don't oh, know of. Go on. Said I had the best beard <laughs> out of all of us. <laughs> Yes, um, they smoking Don. sats waiting to come over and bring you guys more tacos. And he said, Gayland asked for bread. It's Gaylin, 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 L I N, L I N, smoking sats. Mitch uh, asked tech. for brisket, something or other with bourbon. That would be delicious. I've been smoking my bourbon soaked cigars from the old Talbot Tavern in Kentucky one by one every couple weeks. No smoky smoke. Bourbon a little soap cigar. Well, Josh, I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna text you a picture of me clean shaven. Uh -huh. Why? You can show your mother what I look like. You I don't need to show her. This is what you look like. Uh, who knows what can happen? <laughs> don't text me any shaving pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking weirdo. Well, what a great drop. What a great yep. uh, live with her. She is such an inspiration. Indeed. To men and to women. She's just a go-getter. She drives hard. She knows what she wants. She, even in defeat, is still proud and, and you know, doing her things. And so and she'll kick your said, ass. I mean, she builds. She works with her hands. She does. She's not afraid to. She's not afraid of life. To, no, she's not. And she makes her way. And yeah. you said it. I mean, she mm -hmm. talked to us about that, like. Look, just give me a chance and I'll right. show you. Right, right. And she ends up showing them. Right. And it's the best thing they've ever done. But you can learn more about her in the next, especially the next drop and yep. the one after that. Yeah. The, you know. the next two drops are going to be pretty good. Yeah. So you got to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get a notification mm -hmm. to watch her. Maybe we should turn Josh's camera off because he's fucking. I'm yawning, getting tired. Oh but my could you God. just show that two lane life into the camera there? I'm gonna get a, another cr back cramp. Look at that! Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Yes, sir. Anyway, so would let's... you just check real quick to make sure they're live? As I think. They're live. Um, yeah, you know, know, you guys chop it up because I'm gonna do that and I'll drop a link. And the first person to buy one of these shirts will get a virtual high five. <laughs> Uh, they'll get a free glove. 
a free glove. With All the, right. With the travel shirt. So just um, in the in the notes. Oh, right? it is live. It, it is. is. Live, right? You know what? So let me put a that. link. Oof. Let me put a link in here. Call me Jamie from Rogan. Boom. Um, Josh, how did you get your Pelican case to connect to the Eagle Rider bike? The Pelican case is mounted to a tour pack rack. Duct tape. Yes. Tour pack rack. And because yeah. I got a bagger and we rent baggers, it just goes right on. So, yeah, there's that. Anyway, um, should we do a countdown and wait to see if anyone gets a shirt? Well, or, yeah, why, don't, why don't we see if someone not buys do a it. shirt real quick? Yep. And then if they do and the order comes in. We can ask them what glove size they are, and we can ship them a glove. Well, I will this say this. True. With the shirt. We've done a few trips with the Eagle Rider bikes, and then now they have more color available. So, we, you know, we did this uh, southern tour on Eagle Rider bikes. And you know what? They're Harley Davidsons. They're clean. They're ready to go. They rip. We go home, and it's like, hey, we didn't put any miles on our bikes. Very but, cool. Well, guess you know, what? This episode is brought to you again by Eagle Rider Eagle Rider Motorcycle Rentals and Tours. I've only had one beer, I promise. Well, and was... also, when we were doing the Navajo Bridge, we saw some homies that recognized That's us right. in the Hope middle of nowhere York. on 2023 Eagle Riders, that nice crimson blue yeah, or whatever blue. they call it. Oh, yeah. Sorry to cut you off, but I had to say it. So we also uh, have a trip where we're two-lane life. Oh, Jose. Galen, oh, Lance, and Josh are going to join Matt Laidlaw and his guys. And we're going to have a collab vid with uh, – Laidlaw and two lane life is going to be epic. Well, speaking of Laidlaw, we were just in the drop of Harley's annual uh, apparel, which mm -hmm. is cool. And we're going to be in their drop for the 2023 motorcycle launch in January. Yes, so we thank are. you, Harley Davidson, for that. Boom. So, real uh, quick. So, Jose. Jose Mayan, he was the one who ordered the seat as well oh. earlier today. All right. So, we appreciate it, Jose. Right on. Uh, Jose. If that is you, not your average Joe. Is that you, Joe, Jose? Kind of similar, I guess. He said XL on All the right. gloves, unless we have glove. another one. You're going to have to write that down. I will. Because we'll forget. I'll put a comment on there. Put a note in your when you well, he already ordered it. Yeah. He can put a note on it. I'll figure it out. Well, anyway, cool. So Good show. It's that time. Yeah. It's always good so, to see Leti Letitia. Indeed. Do a little Letitia outro. Letitia. Next week is Thanksgiving, so we Letitia will not have or Letitia. Letitia. Potato, uh, potato. Josh and I are, he's coming over for tomato, Thanksgiving. Tomato, tomato. Yep. And we're doing the live from my house. All right. So live from the Anderson house. You'll have really bad service. It'll go in and out and freeze a uh -huh. lot. But wow. I've seen it. What do you mean? I've been on a live with you at your house and it didn't, didn't work. Was that good. Harley Showcase? <laughs> what? Oh, that, yes. Yes, it was. Was he at your house? No, no, I was no. live. Oh, we were all in gotcha. our houses. Yes. Doing... Well, anyway, before our jabbering and our <laughs> yes, Mad Mac, he says they won't stop jabbering. <laughs> um, speaking of jabber, I'm going to give my last jabberoonie. If you didn't watch yesterday's episode, it was a great one. We rode out to Loretto, Kentucky from Cave City, Kentucky, checked out the Maker's Mark Distillery, which was massive, a whole campus. We learned a ton of stuff. We got to dip some bottles. We got to taste some bourbon, um, all that stuff. There's stuff again. Also, read the blog in the description of the video because your boy put in some decent work into that, and I thought it was really nice, people. And, uh, yeah, next week we have a great episode with Letitia touring the caves, going underground, going on a great motorcycle ride, going to the oldest continually operating bar in the country, or so it's called. and uh, The Talbot. The Talbot Tavern. And Arts hearing down. some history from Letitia herself. So, jabber on. We're going to continue. I would continue. say jabberwocky. Jabberwockies. Yeah, we're, quit using that term because we might get taken off the thing because we're using some term that, you know. Jabberwocky? That's a jab. Star Wars. A jab? Oh. You know, they'll, they'll see it and go, get rid of them. Because My, we you're jabber, you're jabberwocking right now. So. Uh, anyway, we're going to continue jabber. to work our asses off and bring you the best stuff we can because we actually love doing that. Oh, we got another one. Uh oh. $69. What's that? <laughs> oh, he's in Canada. I was like, he got he got one shirt. What's going on? Wow. That shipping is uh what's steep. his glove size? Uh what size are you we'll Dave? Glove as well. Dave Padbury. Um email me info at two lane life dot com with your order number and we'll get you going. Yeah. Oh, Dave, thank you. 
we're going right. to jab her on. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Jose. Um, so, hey. XO. You said it earlier, but let's say it again. What's that? What do they need to do? Subscribe. And when you're done doing that, have yourself a great dinner tonight. Go to bed and tell your family you love them when you do that. And then we'll see you in the morning. That's right. Well, this is some motor love. I'm telling you. Right now. <laughs> I'm telling you. Get it here at Tulane Life First. Motor right. love. See you down, see you down the road, Jabberwockies. <laughs> and broadcast.